In 1973, a short story writer by the name Richard A. Lupoff published one of his most famous science fiction stories, 12:01 p.m. In it, a man named Castleman hears the echo of a single loud sound resembling the crashing explosion of air. The clock on the city's Grand Central Tower strikes 12:01 p.m. Castleman knows that the date on the newspaper in his pocket had remained the same. He waits for the familiar green and silver bus to make its turn to one of his favorite restaurants. He thinks there is no point in trying to dine in a fancy restaurant where a fancy lunch would take 2 hours to consume. If he couldn't get served and finish his meal by 1 o'clock, it would be a waste. Instead, he eats at his usual place and after his lunch walks downtown toward the city library and glances at the newspapers on sale at the corner. The news stories on all of them deal with the prediction of Nathan Rosenblum who said that time would soon be warped in a circle. On seeing this, Castleman runs to an unoccupied phone booth and calls his secretary. He asks her to telephone the physics department at the City University in order to speak to Professor Nathan Rosenblum about his time bounce theory and wait for him at the lobby. He runs from the booth into Grand Central Station and takes the subway train to meet the professor. He staggers his way through the lobby and introduces himself to the man. "We only have a few minutes," says Castleman. It was 8 minutes until 1. Rosenblum asks, "What's the matter? What kind of thing is this? Why have you asked me to meet you?" Castleman tries to explain his situation to Rosenblum, tries to make him understand that the time bounce had actually occurred, but Rosenblum stands in disbelief. "It's unbearable. I can't go on living this hour over and over," says Castleman. "Is there a way out of this?" "No. No there isn't," says Rosenblum. "Unless you break the loop yourself." That's when Castleman hears the echo of a single loud sound resembling that of a small caliber firearm. He finds himself looking up at the clock at the Grand Central Tower. His tweed jacket is back on his body and an unruly lock of hair stands out over his left ear. It is 12:01 p.m. Recently, I had this thought. Why do we live such periodic lives? We start off all days in pretty much the same way and the whole day passes almost like yesterday. Couple these days into a group of 7 and you wouldn't notice too much of a difference between what you did last week and what you did this week. In fact, most of us would find it hard to write down five things that we did differently this week. What makes us continue this circle? Have you ever felt like you've lived through the present situation before? People call this phenomenon déjà vu. I like to think of it as a circle repeating itself. Each of these circles can have multiple smaller circles within them. Consider a small circle, the day On average, you get to live about 28,835 of those. Each day may have smaller circles which branch off and eventually end. Then they repeat. If you consider days being grouped into 7, you get to live about 4,119 weeks. Pretty small, right? Now consider these repeating weeks grouped in years. You get to live on average about 79 of those. Each of these year circles have smaller and smaller and even smaller circles which eventually end and start off again. If you thought that the year circle was the biggest circle, well that's just wrong. According to the Bhagavad Gita, the circle of life itself repeats until we find eternal peace and happiness. Until we break away from worldly life as we know it. These circles of life determine what we do every day. It's our choice. We can be like Castleman in the short story 12:01 p.m. and repeat the same experience every day or we can choose to explore something new. We can start off differently today and have different weeks and hence different years. Life as we know it will still be in a circle, but the least we can do is to change the circle itself. What circle will you like to repeat?